But what God wanted me, what the Lord wanted me to speak about today was what do you see? Touch your neighbor and say, what do you see? What do you see? I can't hear you. What do you see? I can't hear you. What do you see? One thing that I've come to discover about God is this. God is always interested with what you can see. Whenever God wants to move on a situation, whenever God wants to increase a person, whenever God wants to bring deliverance in a situation, God will always ask you a question. What do you see? So many believers have this weakness whereby everything is show me, oh Lord. <laughs> Tell me, oh Lord. But there is a place whereby a child is instructed. And then there is a place where a child is no longer a child, becomes a son that is now working and engaging with God. It's no longer about what is God saying. It is about what can I see? Especially those who are clapping, may God bless you. Those who are not clapping, I curse you with a blessing. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> now, you have to understand that whenever God wants to bless you or increase you, He will test your sight. When God is going to speak through you, when God is going to say something through you, bless you. Hey, we are in a good church. You heard everybody just say, bless you. Shara <laughs> baba baba. Somebody shout glory. Glory. Whenever God wants to increase you, Whenever God wants to increase you, God will ask you one question. What do you see? God will not show you what to see. He will ask you that question. Meaning, and this is from my own experience. And when you look at the Gospels and you look at the, at the Torah or the Old Testament and you look at the scriptures in its entirety... God always asks that question. What do you see? When God created Adam and formed him in Genesis chapter 2. Remember Genesis chapter 1, God was creating. Creating and forming are two different things. If you read Genesis chapter 2, it tells you, And God rested from all his work which he created and made. To make something and to create something are two different processes. To create is to design it. To make it is to make it, now to form it. The spirit of man was created. Man already existed. If you read Genesis chapter 2, verse 1, it says, And God rested from all his work which he, has created, he had created. And it tells you, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. There are no new spirits that will be born that did not exist in Genesis chapter 2. Amen. The truth is this. Can I tell you one prophetic truth? Yes. yes. This is a real prophetic truth. And, and hopefully as the days God go and we have another prophetic gathering, I will teach you this. We are all connected. Amen. No, 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 no. Listen clearly. I'm not even saying through the blood. <laughs> because we are believers, no. We are all connected because we were created from the same spirit. <laughs> it is actually a shame that you can encounter another spirit and not know them. Wow. 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 That's real prophetic. That's why you find in our family we can go extra deep. We don't give words. We prophesy. Amen. Those are Amen. two different things. Words is what God is speaking. Prophecy is what God already said. Yeah. Prophetic words and prophecy are two different things. 
a prophetic voice and a prophet are two different things. Somebody with a prophetic gift and a prophet are completely two different things. All are good, all serve the purpose of God, but they are not the same thing. What do you see? I want you to go to Genesis chapter 2 real quick. And I want you to go to verse... Um, I want you to go to uh, verse, yee, verse 18. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18 to 19. I think even to 20. Those babies are cute. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Are you ready? Okay, Bishop, can you get one mic? I want you to read. I want you to keep one mic and leave one mic back there. Are you ready? Yes. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. And the Lord God said, now look at this. God looked at Adam. Everything God made said it was beautiful. If you read Genesis chapter 1, and I believe verse 21, he talks about when God is forming man, I believe. He says, and God said, let us make man in our image and our likeness. Mm -hmm. Let them have dominion, blah, 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 blah. Then he goes and says, and God created he him, male and female, created he them. Notice, God created he him, male and female. Meaning Adam was the first human being to be pregnant because Eve was inside of him. Amen. Don't change the screen, but I want you to just find Genesis chapter 5 verse 1. I want to show you something. Genesis chapter 5 verse 1. Amen. Don't change the screen, but Genesis chapter 1 verse 5. Amen. Uh, Genesis chapter 5 verse 1. Are you ready? This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam. So when God was saying, uh, he created a man and called him Adam, he had created two people. Yeah, amen. Because remember, all spirits were created at the same time. They were formed in the flesh different times. I'm talking to myself. How are you teaching? I'm trying to help you see something. If you go to Genesis chapter number one, and you read, I believe, verse 21, it tells you, and God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, let him have dominion, and it says, and God created he him, male and female created he them, and blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. But Eve was not formed. God was talking to Adam and Eve, but Eve was inside of what? Adam. Adam. Now, Adam was in the garden, but Adam had a need. Look at your neighbor, say, Adam had a need. Adam had a need. Look at the person behind you, say, Adam had a need. Adam had a need. Look at the person on your south, say, Adam had a need. Adam had a need. Look at the one that is in the east, <laughs> say, Adam had a need. Adam had a need. <laughs> Look at your west and say, Adam had a need. <laughs> Adam had a need. Look at North, say, Adam had a need. Adam had a need. Uh, these people are not looking east, west, north, that. <laughs> now capture this. Adam has a need. Amen. And God is coming in response of Adam's what? Need. Adam did not know how to express this need. But Adam had a need because there was something inside of him. That he needed, but he did not know that he was where? inside of him Shy. whenever you need something it is not there it is not here Shy. it is inside teach it i'm talking to myself teach it ah yeah 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 it is not coming it is not going it is where inside hallelujah so you feel like you should have a nice home because it's where inside Hallelujah. You feel like you should have the best health because it's where? Inside. You feel like this door should open because it's where? Inside. 
So you will never need what is not already part of you. That's good. Because you won't even have the ability to think of it. Because you think of it because it's where? Inside. Because notice the first human being. The first human being has everything you could ever think of. And remember, he doesn't even know what a need looks like because he's in the garden of God. Angels are there. The presence of God is there. There are trees. Every fruit he could eat. He never had to work a nine to five in his life. He just wakes up. He doesn't even worry about what he's going to wear. He's just enjoying life. But it is not enough because there was something inside. Shai. Revelator. Is this your is this for somebody here? Yes. Are you sure this is for you? You are here. Yes. Have you have just ever woken up one day? You listen for those who are in music. You wake up, you listen to the radio, you say, Why is everybody making the worst music? I should make because you know you are the you know you are next. Amen. Have you ever just woken up? You're watching a movie and you say, if this role was given to me, I would have killed it. You read a book and you say, Ash, I could write 10 million of this. Amen. You see a business, you say, I was thinking of this, but I can do it even better, even though there's... Have you ever seen some... Now watch this. Have you ever seen somebody executing your idea? Yes. You even go to the extent you say, man, they stole my idea. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You say, man, they stole my idea. But I can still do it better. Why? Because it is something that is where? Inside. Now watch this. God knows the need of Adam. So God is responding to his need, even though he already created the solution. Mm -hmm. So whenever God wants to give a solution, he does not create it. He pulls it out of you. (laughs) Mama Ganapa, maybe you are the only one who is listening to me. Teach it, Papa. (laughs) When God wants to give a solution, he does not create it from heaven. He opens you up and pulls it out. I feel like those who are, I thought you would be happy because uh, you know what let's pray and go home because I don't see like you're understanding what I'm revealing to you now Amen. Are you teaching? hello hello glory glory I feel like I, listen this should make it this is good news yes sir let me show you an example whenever somebody went to the lord jesus they'll say lord i need healing he says do you believe they say yes he says your faith has healed you he would not lay his hand on them he would just say well your faith has healed you but notice they needed something that would boost their faith So the presence of Jesus was simply a faith booster. Because they saw him as the healer. Stand up, my son. Stand, stand, stand right here. So let's pretend he is Jesus. Amen. Even though Jesus is inside of him. Amen. Amen. I want you to pay attention to this. If somebody is over here praying, oh Father, heal me, deliver me. They are praying in fear and in doubt, even though their prayer is genuine. But they say, Lord, can't you hear me? Lord, can't you see me? Because their faith is still moved by what they can, ta- can be tangible. Now, when they heard that Jesus, the one who is healing, delivering people, is in town, they were like, man, I don't need to do anything because my faith is in him. So when they would come to him, Jesus would say, do you believe for your healing? They would say, yes, 
Because they are convicted by the presence of Jesus. Conviction opens you up. Hallelujah. Because conviction opens you up. Jesus will just say, do you believe? They will say, Lord, I believe. He will say, okay. Your faith has healed you. Because their faith was so high, they opened themselves. Jesus just opened them and he put their hand inside of them and they pulled out their own miracle. He says, you healed yourself. I don't know if somebody is catching this. Notice, whenever it was up to Jesus to actually do it, he was annoyed. You say, how long will I be with you? Faithless generation. They will say, Lord, if you can do something, you say, I am here and you're saying, if I can do something, Lord, help my unbelief. You say, how long will I be with you? Because you're saying, why can't you get it? It is inside of you. I put it when I created you. You are walking around with your own solution. Can I have more volume on my mic? Look at your neighbor and say, you are walking with your own solutions. You're walking with your own solutions. I can't hear you. You're walking with your own solutions. I can't hear you. You're walking with your own solution. Your solution is not coming. It is where? With That's you. Right. Amen. Okay, let me make it even easier. Sit for a second. Let me make it easier. We have not even gone deep. Let me just make it easy. Try. Somebody say, prophet, make it easy. Prophet, make it easier. Let me tell you, you know what revelation does? When God speaks, he speaks mysteries. Amen. Unless you have the decoder to decode what he's saying, it will still be difficult. But revelation is when the message has been converted and has been made possible for a regular person to digest it. Spiritual information, but it is cooked. Well done. That you can eat it. And you can digest it. If you eat it raw, you have stomachache, headache. Your stomach will be all over the place. And you still you will lose more weight instead of... Because it will not work for you. The Lord Jesus said something interesting. I'm trying to make it as simple as possible. Simple as possible. Seek first the kingdom of God. Remember the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven are two different things. I will teach you about it at some point. Amen. Seek first the kingdom of God. God. And all its what? Righteousness. And what? Everything else shall be added unto you. Now, if you read it and you, and you interpret the whole thing in Greek, in its raw form, it says, desire the kingdom of God and all its values. Now, the problem is people, when they hear all its righteousness, they say, you have to be righteous to enter into the kingdom of heaven. But then you realize that the Bible is saying, all your righteousness is like what? Filthy rags. So my righteousness does not make me receive the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is all the righteousness I will ever need. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But you think there is work to do. No, you simply need to believe. That Jesus is the only good I will ever need to be. Hallelujah. If I have Jesus, I am perfect in God's sight. Yes. Whenever you put your righteousness to effect, just think about a person who's wearing rags. Not just rags, but they are what? Filthy. So desire the kingdom of God and its righteousness, not yours. And everything else shall be added. Now, Jesus, before he ascends to heaven, he looks at his disciples and says this. He says this to them. If anybody tells you the kingdom of God is coming, mm -hmm. it is there, mm -hmm. 
it is here. Do not believe them, for the kingdom of God is where? Within you. When Peter realized this truth, Peter would go to the temple with John, and they found somebody asking him for silver and gold. He said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have from the reserve of the kingdom rise up and walk he could remove something from the kingdom of heaven and give it to anybody Shine. at any time Shine. it no longer depended on him interceding and praying it was simply a matter of bringing it out if you have jesus in you you have the kingdom of god in you and if you have the kingdom of god in you all everything else is also where added Hallelujah. Shine. So whenever you are praying for breakthrough, what you are actually looking for is access to the kingdom that is inside of you. I, I feel like I'm talking to myself. So whenever God wants to heal somebody, deliver somebody, bless somebody, do something in somebody, he is not bringing a breakthrough from heaven. <laughs> The things that God brings to heaven, from heaven, are things that you do not have on earth. So he will come and give you something that no human being can acquire, except that it comes from him. My ability to know scripture is not because I'm the greatest study. You probably read the scriptures more than me. I'm being honest with you. It is something that I was given from heaven. I'm being honest with you. Now capture this. So Adam is carrying his own solution the whole time. So he's feeling lonely because there is something inside of him that is calling to what was inside. Some of you, you feel like you should be at a certain place in your life. Is because that thing that is inside of you is like a baby ready to be birthed that is kicking, turning, giving you heartaches, making you. I, I feel like I'm talking to myself. I am. TJ Papa. That baby is growing and growing until it will make you uncomfortable. You start walking like this. Because the miracle is pushing you to birth. Now watch this. Sit, 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 sit. Watch this. And the Lord said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make, he, I will make him an helpmate for him. Now notice this. God is not saying, I will create because you already created. Yes. He's saying, I will make it. Yes. Let me explain to you something. God cannot do anything with the earth without going through man. I will explain to you why. Number one, when God created everything that pertains to earth, he gave it to man. So he has no ability to take anything from the earth because he gave it to a human being. The only thing that God owns on the earth is a human being. So when God created Adam, the only thing that God owned was Adam. And everything that he created was for Adam. Because God knew that as long as I have control of Adam, I have control of what? The earth. So even when he wanted to create Eve, he could not create Eve from the dust of the ground. He could only create Eve out of the rib of Adam. Because the only thing that he owns is what? When God wants to give you a breakthrough, he will go to you and pull something out of... Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> Hallelujah! I, I feel like I... Sh ah. <laughs> Is somebody catching this? We catch you. Somebody shout glory. Glory! Somebody shout caprosoto. Caprosoto! Now watch this. I want you to capture this. God is saying, I will make him somebody. 
But instead of God making somebody, look at what God does. God is saying, I will make him a helpmate. Go to verse 19. Now look at God and God, how crafty God is. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. Now notice, God is forming creatures. Adam has a need because he needs a helper. But God wants to really see, does he know what the helper looks like? You are not catching what God is doing here. God's intention was not to bring the animals to Adam. He brought the animals to Adam to see if he, out of the animals he would still desire Eve. The true solution that he's looking for. Some of you, you are praying for breakthroughs. God will bring animals to see if you can see the million dollars. You are praying for marriage. God will allow some useless people to come around to see if you can really see the one that he has for you. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Listen to this. Sit, sit for a second. The ability to discern, the ability to see, means you see the miracle that has your name on it. I am talking to myself. Let me tell you, just because your neighbor bought a house in the mountain, doesn't mean your house is in the mountain. Your house may be at the beach. Just because your friend got a promotion, maybe yours is to own the whole company. I will see. But if you have no ability to see, I'm talking to myself. I feel like I'm talking to myself. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Randole kishta aparia. Veredoste eperidia falu. Now watch this. If you don't know what is yours, Haven't you ever noticed when you start saying, Lord, I pray for a godly relationship. I want a man of God. All the non-men of God start showing up. All the people that you would never even give attention, they're the ones that are coming now. You start saying, maybe God will say, I will change. Maybe God will change them. Not knowing that if they come like that and you accept them, be ready to keep it like that. Because you can't change anybody. Aish, I just stepped on some toes. When God is about to bring a big, big business breakthrough, some people that will come and give you quick solutions, you know, we can just do this and you get this quick, you know. But God permits that to see if you really know. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I always, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big movie fan. Anybody that knows me, I love movies. The reason why I love movies is because the prophetic goes with stories. I like watching things. I love watching things all the time. The Lord w was a great observer of things. I enjoy it so much. If I could go to the movies every day, I would do it. I love it. Now watch this. Uh, how many people know Sylvester Stallone? He was living in his car when he wrote one of his biggest movies, Rocky. Amen. So many people rejected it for years. He believed in the script and he believed that he should be the guy that plays him. Because he stuck to it the day that he got that breakthrough. Because of that. Rainbow came out. All his biggest things followed up. Why? Because he knew what was his. You see, what you have still not understood, children of God, is this. 
you are praying for million dollar breakthrough. Bill Gates has never fasted a day. He has never prayed in tongues. But he could pull out Microsoft out of him. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> you, you are still. Rebe, be, 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 santo, million, come, come. You are not opening yourself up to realize what, that what you see. <laughs> I'm being honest with you. Can I be honest with you? Prayer gives you insight on God's mind and what God has deposited in you. Can God give you miracle money breakthrough? Absolutely. But he does not want you to depend on it. Because what he created that will be the reserve of what you will always enjoy, he put it inside of you. Amen. God planted the first garden on earth and told Adam, you continue the job. God planted seed, a tree that will give him seeds and told him, now carry on. God was not going to plant the next tree. Right. Right. Ooh, good. So if you don't know the seeds that I knew, so God is making animals and bringing them to Adam to see what he would call them. Now notice, God did not bring the animals to Adam to name them. God already named all of them. But the only way Adam will not only have control of the animals, because in Jewish tradition, what you name is what you control. And this is actually a spiritual principle. If God never named Adam, Adam would never obey him. All of you, you are named by somebody, and that person has control over you. I'm being honest with you. True. I'm being very honest with you. That is why the Bible says honor them. Because when you honor them, even though they may be wicked and they want to curse you, a curse without a cause will never stand because you honored. The honor will counter the curse that your mother or your father may have spoken to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Because you still honor their position. So if they abuse their position, heaven will intervene and say, no, you are misusing power. Your job is to honor them. You don't have to agree with them if they are on the wrong path. But even in your disagreement, disagree with honor. Not, I'm going to do my thing anyway. You do you. I'm a grown person, Aish. If they sit down and say, Lord, I carried this child for nine months, Aish. The Bible says, honor your father and mother. And not only will your days be long, but it shall be well with you. Amen. There's nothing worse than living long and living a miserable life. Yes. <laughs> Capture this. So God is looking at what he will call them, not what he would name them. I know many of you, you've been taught that Adam named animals. He never did. God was testing his ability to see. Can he see through my eyes and know what I named them? Try. That is why it's saying, and out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them, not name them. To call somebody, it means you already know what their name is. So if I look and I say, Melody, I am not naming you, I am calling your name. If I say, Mike, I am simply calling your name. If I say, Candace. Whatever I am saying, I'm simply calling it. That is why the Bible says, we call those things that are not as if they are not, we don't name them. You didn't catch it. You did not catch it. We call those things that are what? Are not as if they were. We are not naming anything. Aish. 
You're too much. You're too much. We are just seeing. God is just seeing if we can see the way he's seeing. Somebody shout glory. Glory. Are you sure you're here with me? Look at this. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. It was already their name. He was not naming anything. Now look at the next verse. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helpmate for him. Meaning the whole time Adam was looking, he was looking, Eve, no. Lion. <laughs> now, nah, monkey. Rabbit. He was searching. How do we know this? Go to the next verse. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept. Notice this. When God sees that you have passed the test of mediocrity, shallow things, he will cause you to dream and dream deeper and bigger. He will expand your vision. I don't know if somebody is listening to me. You're too much. Haven't you ever noticed sometimes when you are really in deep prayer and you're walking close with God, you may not have much, but your faith for much has increased. Maybe I'm talking to myself. You start seeing yourself, you, you even your audacity in faith increases. Let me tell you something. Sit for a second. There is no such thing as blind faith. When people say, just have blind faith and go for it. There's no such thing. Because faith sees what no other man can see. Faith receives what no other man can receive. Faith knows what no other man knows. Faith takes hold of what other men cannot take hold of. Faith established what everybody else disapproved. And he took of his rib and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Notice he did the same process. The same way he brought, he brought lion. The same way he brought monkey. The same way he brought everything. He brought also the woman. Wow. But when he saw her, read the next verse. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bone. Notice, he said, this is now. Meaning he knew what he was looking at. Ay, 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 ay. Ay, I feel ay, like, ay, ay. are you listening to me? How did he know this? How did he know this? God did not even tell him who he brought in front. When he brought lions, he didn't tell them these are animals. He brought them to see if he will see his helper. Adam confirmed and he said, none of this have what I am looking for. It's not with them. I will name them. I will call them by their name so that they remain where they are, not close to me. You see, when you say my issues, you have made them close to you. My difficulty, you have married yourself to them because you have said they have become yours. Adam never said my lion. He said lion. He never said my monkey. He said monkey. But when he saw Eve, he said, now this is my bone. I, I, are you catching what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Touch your neighbor, ask them, what do you see? You see. Hallelujah. Amen. 
The question is, what do you see? Because whenever God comes to you, you are praying for something. You desire something. God will always ask you. Imagine that, you know, sometimes I feel like, you know, when you know God, you understand that God plays a lot of games. He really does. He really does. Jesus. A blind man said, Lord, help me. And Jesus stops and says, what can I do for you? <laughs> you know, the man was blind, but I bet you he rolled his eyes. <laughs> God. <laughs> because the Lord... I'm going to show you something else. Go to Genesis chapter 15 verse 5. Genesis 15 5. Genesis 15 5. Hi. Thank you Lord. Amen. Genesis 15 5. Genesis 15, 5. Are you there? Amen. Are you ready? Yes. Amen. I want you to actually start from verse 4, sorry. Amen. Verse 4 to 6. Read. Yes, read. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, this shall not be thine heir, mm -hmm. but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. Mm -hmm. And he brought forth him, he brought him forth abroad and said, look now toward heaven mm -hmm. and now, tell the... Now I want uh, us to read all that together. Verse five. One, two, three. And he brought him forth abroad and said, look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. Verse 6. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for his righteousness. Now notice this. Abraham was minding his own business. God came to him and told him, Abraham, I will make you the father of many nations. Abraham answered God and told him, Lord, you're saying I will be this man that will have many nations with me. But the reality is you have not given me a son. The only thing that you have given me is my servant Eliezer, who will be the one that will inherit everything that I have. And the moment he said that, God told him, can you go outside? He went outside. He told him, look to heaven. He looked up to heaven. He told him, can you count the number of stars? How many people can count stars? How many people have attempted to count stars? I used to do that when I was a kid. One, two, three, then you lose count. You start over. And God told him, can you count the stars? He said, count them. He said, I, I can't count them. This one is impossible to do. And the Lord told him, so shall what? Your descendants what? B. B. Go to verse number 12. Same chapter, go to verse 12. Go to verse 12. Amen. Can we read it together? One, two, three. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. Stop right there. How, so meaning when God told him, go outside, count the stars, it was day. Amen. Wow, wow, wow. Because the sun had not gone down. But you, the moment you read, can you go count the stars? You're assuming it is night. It was in the day. God told him, go outside. Can you number the stars? He looks, he says, Aish. <laughs> it is impossible. <laughs> God said, so shall your descendants be. And Abraham believed God. And it was counted for... Now, why do you need to believe? It means that you didn't see it. 
Because if you see it, you don't need to believe. It's already there. Are you catching what I'm going with this? So God will always provoke you to believe. So that you see through the eyes of faith and you receive exactly what you are seeing through the eyes of faith. Let me tell you why. If you see it with physical eyes, it means it's small. If you need to add imagination, it means it is bigger than you. It will take God to do. Amen. And if you can see it with your imagination, he says now, unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what? What all, all that we can you, can, you can think, imagine, or pray. So God is interested in doing more than what you can see. Amen. So whenever you just want a miracle that everybody has, God is saying, come on. Can we push the bar higher? Touch your neighbor say, God wants to push the bar higher. God wants to push the bar higher. Notice God did not bring Abraham in front of a family of a father. Maybe they had 16 children. Oh, wow. And said, you will be a great nation. God was giving him one child. But out of that child, he will be a father of all nations. You have to understand, even that formula itself takes faith. Yes, yes, yes. What if that child gets sick? What if he only has one child? But God is saying, no, you, you'll be father of many nations. Because of one child that will come out of you. So Abraham, for him to be the father of many nations, he needed to see through the eyes, not of man, but of what? Faith. God asked him, what can you see? Can you count them? But God challenged him to see something when there was no sign of what he wanted to see. Some of you, you're looking for breakthrough. There's no even smell or, or even a, a sign of breakthrough. But God is saying, can you see the breakthrough? Can you see the answer to the prayer? Can you see the open door? Can you see what I'm about to do? What is God trying? God is trying to make you see through the eyes of what? Faith. Let me show you an example. Go to Genesis chapter 1. Sorry, that's deep. I'm going to show you how to do that. It's actually very easy. Genesis chapter 1. Amen. From verse 3. Genesis chapter 1 verse 3. Genesis chapter 1 verse 3. Now, can we read it together? Amen. One, two, three. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Can we read that one more time? And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Read verse four. And God saw the light, and that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Now, you have to understand, that mm -hmm. doesn't make any sense. How do you divide light from darkness? Do you know why the Bible says the light shineth in darkness and darkness does not understand it? This is where it started. Because when God said, let there be light, he saw darkness. He didn't see light. But with his own eyes of faith being God, he said that he saw that the light was good and he separated it from darkness. Meaning what, what he was looking at and the result were two different things. He had to use his own faith to divide what was darkness from light you know what let's go home let's pray and go home many a times when you're believing for something you see the negative more than the positive but god reached out into what he had seen and pulled out what he had called forth but notice this go to verse 2 go to verse 2 of the same thing and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. 
So God still had the thought of darkness in his mind. Because when he said, let there be light, he did not create the sun. Because remember, he's creating light in context of planet earth. Not of the heavens. The earth had already been corrupted because the devil had already fallen. And I taught this in depth in the prophetic school. The earth was already messed up. And because the earth was already messed up, what happened was the earth was already out of shape of what it should have been. That is why when God created Adam, he told him, what? Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. To replenish means do it again. He's not saying now do it for the first time. Replenish means if I tell you, refill, give me a refill of my coke. It means there used to be coke in there. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. To re means do it again. So before the earth was covered with darkness, it never used to be in darkness. There was a light on earth that was not the stars, the moon, and the... It was not the earth that we know now. Because the beings that lived on this earth before man were different from us. And I taught this in the prophetic school. The earth was inhabited by cherubims. This is the home of cherubims before man. That is why the Bible says, and the earth, man has been given the lease of earth for X amount of years. It says 6,000 years. It doesn't mean the earth is 6,000 years old. The earth is way older than 6,000. That is why you find in the Garden of Eden, when even God replanted the garden, the devil was already in the garden. And the angels that were keeping the garden, even to this day, is still cherubims. And the Lord put cherubims with flaming sword left and right to stop man from entering into the garden. There is nothing new under the sun. Amen. That is why when you read the book of Ezekiel, the devil is saying, And I will ascend unto the heavens and lift up my throne. Meaning he was not there. He was here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but remember what I told you in the beginning. That in all the kingdom of God and even the heavens, God's throne is in all of them. But there is a headquarters. So God is saying, let there be light. And he saw that the light was good, but he's separating it. How can you separate what you say that it's good? Notice, something is countering what God wanted. Because God never called for darkness. He called for light. But he makes the darkness a non-issue. When you pray for something good and you see something bad coming out, Come you on, make Papa. it a bigger deal than what you called. Come on, Papa. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Ay, 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 ay. That's good. That was good. Let, let me show you something. Let me show you something. I'll show you something and then we'll, end, we'll go towards the end. Hallelujah. 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 Now, I want you to read uh, verse, the same chapter. Glory be to Jesus. Allah brandia kusta apa. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want you to read from verse 11. Verse 11 of Genesis chapter 1. Verse 11 to 12. Are you ready? Amen. Read 1, 2, 3. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seeds is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. Mm -hmm. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And mm -hmm. God saw it was good. Now notice this. God is seeing that everything is what? Good. Good. But I want you to read, go to Genesis chapter 2. Amen. Verse 4 to 5. Amen. Verse 4 actually to 6. Amen. Chapter 2, verse 4 to 6. Are you ready? Amen. 
Read it. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth. And every herb of the field before it grew. Now ask yourself this question. What was God saying in Genesis chapter 1 and he saw the plants were good? What plants was he seeing? Remember in Genesis chapter 1 he's telling you, and God saw every herb of the tree. He brought forth after its kind and he saw that it was good. But when you go to now Genesis chapter 2, he's telling you nothing grew. Because remember the sun is being created in verse 17. Yes. How can you plant without the sun? Plants follow the sun. But there was no sun and it had never rained on the earth. So when God was saying that he saw that the plants were good, no plant was in the earth. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he was seeing something else that was not in the earth yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just because you see something that others cannot see, it does not mean that it's not there. Aish. <laughs> Some of you, just because somebody will tell you, well, I don't think that is possible, you remove your focus from seeing it. God, see, sit for a second. I want you to reason. I want you to think. Because God wants us to be conformed to his image. Meaning that God will always deal with us according to how he deals with himself. He will not create an easy way for you. Never. Because you love your neighbor as you love what? Yourself. Meaning God will deal with you the way he deals with what? Himself. Now, for the things that he knows in our human capacity, we were not going to be able to do. He made himself into a human being and fulfilled it unto himself as a human being. But the character is still up to us. Jesus is not going to act for us. He has done it for us, but we have to carry it out. Amen. So now God is saying, Ah. These are good plants. But notice this. God could not even create the trees before, because there was no man to till the ground. Meaning Adam had to participate in the growing of things. When you read chapter 2, it continues, it tells you, there was no rain upon the earth, upon the earth and there was no man to till the ground. So what was God saying? Have you ever planted something without preparing the ground? It cannot work. Even if you have ever just planted like tomatoes in your, you know, or even just grass or whatever, you yeah. need to prepare the ground that things are going to grow Come from. On, Papa. God is telling you that in chapter 1, he's saying everything is perfect. Yes. But when you go to actually the earth, you realize there's nothing in it. Because the center of everything which was man was not put in the, God, in the earth yet. Because Adam is the one that caused the effect of everything to start taking place. Wow. Come on, Papa. Wow. Shy. Wow. Things are not taking place because you have not entered into your garden. I feel like I'm talking to myself. You know, this is a message for those people who are tired of praying vain prayers. Touch your neighbor, ask them, what do you see? What do you see? Whenever God wants to do something in your life, you say, God, I want this and this to change. God will say, very good, but what do you see? What you say and what you see. Remember, God... God doesn't need your words. He knows what you want before you even say it. But God sees, wants to see. What do you see? Let me tell you the highest form of prayer. Is not telling God what you want. Showing God what you want. The highest form of prayer is not even tongues. Is showing God what you want. Mm. 
Let me tell you why you can't do that. Many of you can't do that. <laughs> I like that. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Romans 12, 2. Romans 12, 2. Romans 12, 2. Amen. Shy. Shy, 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 shy. This is taking Amen. miles. Amen. Notice this. Can we read it together? Yes. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So when you pray, God show me your perfect will, he will not. It is for you to prove what is the will of God. Powerful. You know, people read these verses. I don't know how people read these things. You need to read it with what it's saying. Don't assume what the word of God is saying. See it through the, word, through the eyes of the spirit and what God is really saying. He's saying, do not be conformed to this world. Meaning that if your lens of looking at things is through the eyes of the world, you will never be able to tell what the will of God is. Meaning that the will of God is not told, but it is seen. When you are sick, do you pray that it is God's will for him to heal you? Or do you know that healing is yours? The world says that God will heal you if he feels like it. Amen. But God says, did I die for nothing? Right. 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 Can you prove that which is the perfect will of God? But you can never prove that unless you change your mind from being a carnal person, a natural man, to somebody that is what? Supernatural. Meaning what is running in your mind determines how you see. Yes. Yes. I believe in breakthrough. I believe in breakthrough. The point is not believing it. Can you see it? Yes. I believe God. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, but can you see? Can you prove? A child of God, because of your mind being renewed, you should stand at a crossroad and know you should turn left. You should stand at a crossroad and know that you need to make a right and then a left and then a right. Simply by looking. Not because somebody, you see, God uses prophets to tell you where to turn as a form of 911. But it's not an everyday thing. It's not supposed to be a 24-hour thing. You know, even though God speaks to me all the time, even though God shows me visions all the time, I don't do it all the time. Somebody can come and ask me, ah, Papa, what is this? I'll say, go and pray. <laughs> now, I'm telling you the truth. Because if I spoon feed you, Amen. you will always want to just, what is God saying? What is God saying? But God should speak to you also. Amen. What if I'm not here? What if God calls me? I only do it as a form of emergency. Like last week when, uh, uh, where's my daughter? She's not here. When her mom was like, oh, there she is. And, and, and how's, where's mom? She, she's, where is she? She was sick? Okay. The mother was here and, and I was speaking to, no, you don't need to go to her. But when I was speaking to, to the mother, she was like, my children and this and this and this. I told her, no, the problem did not start with your children. It started in 1935. I even told her the location of where the problem started, in Georgia. She was shocked. How does this guy who's never met me, an African guy, know when this all these things started? And how they started? How they started, they went to her and even plagued other people. Right. Never spoken to her, never seen her, I'm just telling her. Right. That is 911. Right. Yeah. Emergency. Yeah. Because it's beyond your natural capacity 
to actually find where the issue is. But the desire of God is not always like that. When I was prophesying to, to, to Sophia and I was talking to her, I went even to the time that uh, she was doing like all this ballet stuff and stuff. Yes, she hasn't done it, but I'm telling her what she used to do. All those things are 911 to prove you, to open you up to what God is about to do. Amen. This is why Jesus told Thomas, Blessed is he that believes without what? See. Because to see with the eyes of faith is better than to see with the physical eyes. Because what is physical is temporary. So as long as you think about your career by everybody else that did the same career, oh, nobody ever gets to this level. So... You know, that's just how it works. Are you them? No. Are they you? No. no. Why are you measuring yourself to other people? You did not, you are not even born the same. Amen. But you have tied your faith and your faith to the people that you are watching. Abraham, to believe God, it means that he did not measure himself to people. Ask yourself this very important question. I want you to really think about it. Caria sonte le prende via. Ask yourself this very, 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 very absolutely important question. What is your reaction to issues that arise? How do you see and what do you see? How do you see and what do you what? See. see. Amen. Because how you see it determines what will come out of it. Amen. Not how you pray. Because when God comes, he comes to pull the solution out of you. Because God is not creating a, a, an emergency breakthrough. Everything that you have ever wanted, everything that you're looking for is inside of you. God will just come and make it easy for it to come out of you. But his mission is not now when you pray for healing, now he's thinking about how he's going to heal you. Every car manufacturer already created the spare parts. Amen. And their, des their, de their destinations whereby there's people who specialize in fixing your car with the parts because they already have it. Yeah. Same thing with God. He's not creating a new finger because you lost it. He already prepared reserves upon reserve upon reserve. But the question is this. When people talk to me rudely, what is my reaction? Do I sit there and say, you, huh? <laughs> I don't know if somebody is catching this. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. I want you to write this down because this is not a matter of prayer only. Amen. It's a matter of actively working with your mind to delete the old program and install the program from heaven. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Shine. Are we ready? Hey, spirit of Lorai. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> Proverbs 4, 23. Yep. 4, 23, 23. There it is. 23, 4, 23. Are you ready? Amen. Yes. Can we read it together? One, two, three. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Read it one more time. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. So the issues you have, you have either made them big or small or completely gotten rid of them. Yeah. 
based on what is inside of you. Because the same way you can make a big breakthrough big, the same way you can grow a tree to become big, the seed inside of you, in your heart, the Lord Jesus said this, a good man brings forth good things out of their heart. He did not say good words, Amen. good things. The Bible says the things we speak to you, meaning every word you speak is material. Amen. You may be speaking a house, a car, health, breakthrough. They are things. Words are things. That is why when somebody says hurtful words, they hurt more than somebody stabbing you or shooting you. My heart. <laughs> you know, when people say sticks and stones can break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Biggest lie ever told. It's the biggest lie ever told. Aish, words are dangerous. Do you understand that the universe was formed by words? God was speaking things. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. What is coming out of you determines how you see. If somebody just thinks everybody is after them, they will always be paranoid that somebody just wants to... Uh, huh. No, I was just trying to say hi. No, no, no. Huh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because now... Everything they're reacting to is what somebody did to them 15 years ago. That has become the lens which they're seeing life through. To, the, through. Because somebody was abusive, they think everybody is abusive, but yet they're believing God for a breakthrough in relationship. You can never have what you don't see. Because even if it comes to you, you will not maintain it. You will destroy it because you are still seeing the wrong way. Perspective is reality. Yeah. Wealthy people see problems as an opportunity for business. Come on, Papa. But somebody who is in a poverty mentality, they see an issue. They don't see a business opportunity. They see more problems. They say, if it is not one thing, it is another. But the businessman is saying, Lord, more problems so I can get richer. <laughs> because Amen. the more, I'm telling you the truth. What do you see? Do you see opportunities where people are not seeing opportunities? Are you seeing an open door where nobody else is seeing an open door? What do you see? It matters greatly to God. Because God will never do anything in your life that you have no ability to see. Let me tell you the saddest thing, and I want this especially to, to my sons that are here, that God, and, and my daughters, and everybody that is here. Especially uh, um, and th those that are in music. I saw a vision. And I saw in this vision, God was going to raise very many big stars from this place yeah. in entertainment. Amen. I really did. But let me tell you something. I saw one thing. Many will not have the ability to see what God has given them. They will not see it because once the doors have already started opening, they have already forgotten God. Number two, they will not realize that the blessing came in the form of men that God sent to them. Instead of using the opportunity God has given them, some of them will get even in discord with them to try and prove a point. Now, whenever God shows these things, he shows them so that they can be averted. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, he Lord. always reveals in order to redeem something. Hallelujah. But the redemption will come from the person that is hearing this message. Are you going to see the hand of God in the form of a man? Or are you going to see like man it was supposed to happen anyway? And abuse it and God will take it from you and give it to another. You always have to be somebody that is mindful of the moving and the act, whatever God is doing. Somebody who does not see God will most likely lose everything that God gave them. Because the way you maintain what came from God is by keeping God. You lose God, you lose what he gave you. This is a reality, I'm telling you. You know when I say things, I say them because I know what I'm saying. I'm not saying them because I'm playing. Let's get a few more verses that will help you. Amen. Proverbs 16 verse 3. Proverbs 16 3. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Read it. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. One more time. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. One more time. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Notice God is not establishing what you are doing. He's establishing your thoughts. No, you didn't catch the verse. When you want to do some things, you commit them to God. Because of what you are seeing in your thoughts. And God will establish your thoughts, not the... I have a dream one day. I will have a house with 20 bedrooms. God is coming to establish that thought. I'm talking to the wrong people. Let me move this way. I have a dream. One day, I will build an orphanage Amen. that will house so many children. Amen. God is coming to establish what? That thought. Not the words, the thoughts. But the way he establishes those thoughts is by you wanting to commit them already to him. So God is coming to deal with you in order to establish what? You know when people say, <laughs> we bind every stronghold. Ish. The Bible says stronghold in your mind. It says our weapons are mighty in God. In the pulling down of strongholds. In the mind. Your enemy, you created them in your own mind. I am sorry to tell you the truth. The devil comes and pinches you here, pinches you there to get a reaction in you. And then he scares you. Then you build this imagination of a giant with horns that you will not make it unless you cover yourself 24-7. So now you are walking with something you have established in yourself. So now you are fighting something externally that is in you. All you need to do is remove those glasses. Hallelujah. This is why the Lord Jesus says in Luke chapter number 4. Come on, Papa, teach it. In verse 23, I believe he says this. He says, to preach deliverance to the captives. To preach. I can cast out demons. I've done it a billion times. But there are some people, I look at them, they say, ah, the devil is... I say, there's no devil. <laughs> Go back to meditating on the word of God. I'm telling you the truth because, listen, uh, one of my names is Kana. Everybody that comes across me 
I test. I'm like a metal detector. Amen. <laughs> if there's a spirit, I will tell you. Before even I tell you, we'll be bringing it out and you will not even understand what happened. God establishes your thoughts. Yeah, yeah. So if you are a person who is always thinking about negative things, yeah. you are thinking about bad things. You are always thinking about what you would do when God blesses you so much. You are already exercising, indulging in the wrong things now. God leaves you to that because already you have already established yourself. But when you are willing to commit your ways to him, then he establishes what? Your thoughts. What do you see? Let me tell you something. When I look at people, I don't see, even though I can see what you may have done, where you may have went wrong, I never look at that because that's immature prophets do that. That's, those are children, boys in the prophetic, children. When I look at people, I see what God wants to bring out of them. So I will never point out I will never, ever, ever point out the wrong. Because you already know the wrong you're doing. Why should I come and tell you? And by the way, nobody changes because you told them the wrong they're doing. You tell them what they can be. They change. Uh, I, I remember I was talking, uh, uh, what is it called? Um, uh, where, where is my son Emmanuel? He's not here. He's probably outside. Emmanuel had brought a friend and I was, uh, the service was over and I was sitting down. I asked for a chair actually. And I didn't want to talk too much, but I talked about, I spoke about deep sensitive things and I kept some things hidden. I said, you know what this is? Divert. If you don't, the year will not end. You'll die. So there are things that God will speak to save you. But a prophet will never be sent to expose you. If you ever meet somebody who, and usually the people who do those things, their prophetic is too small. God himself has seen beyond your sin. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I wish you'd clap better than that. Hallelujah. God does not deal with any human being according to their mistake. He deals with them according to the goodness of Christ. So who are you as a human being to deal with somebody with the wicked that they may have done? Hallelujah. The only time I have ever just spanked somebody with prophecy is when you test me. Don't do that. <laughs> Is when you do that, it becomes a problem now. Because I'll have to humble you. <laughs> That's the only time I'll bring skeletons out. Just to show you that you need to keep quiet. I remember one time, I think I was with my son. I just saw him and I remembered. I was with, I was with my son Calvin in the studio. <laughs> and we were sitting and some friends he had brought over. And, and the friends came and they had been to some certain ministry and there was supposedly a, a false prophet. I don't know who they were talking about. But they were like, yeah, you know, this prophet thing is fake. This blah, 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 blah. I've never... Aish. So I'm listening to them. My spirit now, not, not Lovi, but prophet Elias now is getting irritated. He's saying, these people, do they know that they are with one right here? But even with that, I felt sorry. I said, you... I'm seeing you in your house. You went and opened. <laughs> I saw a big snake wrapped around your head. And it was squeezing your head. I saw you opening your, your bathroom. You opened the, what is it called? The cabinet. The glass, whatever. And you pulled out and you took out pills for migraines. You went to the hospital today for my. The person freaked out, froze. <laughs> How do you know that? <laughs> told him prophets are real. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. And immediately the conversation changed. But I didn't even want to expose their wrong. I just wanted to show them, shh. You may not know whom you're speaking to. Some of us, we are 24 7 surveillance of heaven. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. So the key here is this What are you seeing? Can I give you one more verse? Yeah. Absolutely. Let me give you one, one more verse, maybe. Proverbs 21, verse 2. Amen. Proverbs 21, verse 2. Amen. Are you there? Amen. Uh huh. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. Notice that everybody thinks they are right. Yeah. That's right. But the one who really knows if you're right is God, because he looks at the eyes of your heart. Not just the content, the eyes. What are you seeing? Because remember, the ability to see right and wrong is in you. So just because you have seen something wrong doesn't mean you are seeing it through the eyes of them being wrong. Read it one more time. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but mm -hmm. the Lord pondereth the hearts. Mm -hmm. So God is looking at what is in your heart. You see people who like to curse, mm -hmm. that's how they see things. So even if in, they're in the house of God and they want to speak like proper, you already your mouth is filthy. How can you release something clean out of it? You already conform to the world. God won't establish you. And if it comes through another way except from God, it will destroy you. How many successful people do we know that have died, yet they have everything? But then they realize that it was not everything. How are you seeing things? Because how you see things determines how God is going to deal with you. When you pray for something, God asks you, what do you see? He will test, he will test your language. He will test your sight. Because all these things are governed by one thing. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 16. I'll give you two verses. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to work on. If you leave the presence of God and you have nothing to work on, you are not in church. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. Are you there? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Read it. Having a good conscience. That whereas they speak evil of you, as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. Shine. Read it one more time. Shine. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you, as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse of your good conversation in Christ. If you want to know you have a clear conscience... The first thing, are you a gossiper? Somebody who always has an opinion about people, you're talking about people. You are unclean to God. You are not BBC News, you are not CNN, you are not MSNBC. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's nothing that God hates more than that. It means your conscience is not clear. Because it's not, it's not pure and it's not clean. You don't have a pure conscience because you're always looking for what people are doing wrong. A pure conscience does not even want to see wrong because seeing wrong corrupts your conscience. 
it contaminates you. Okay. So when people want to do their wrong thing, you turn the other way. You love them, but you turn the other way. When people want to speak about others, when they want to just start, you say, Shh, I'm good. That's not for me. Oh, that's good. That's true. Because a clear conscience is a testimony, not only before God, but God will use it to prove you in the presence of your enemies. When Job, everything went wrong with Job, his friends that were men of God, they thought he had done wrong. He said, my conscience is clear. I know I have done nothing. Notice he knew within himself. Meaning his friends were gossiping, saying, I, maybe, you know, Job out here acts right, like right. this, but we know what you're doing now. You see, you have sinned. Repent, repent. But Job was innocent. Why was he innocent? Remember, God actually told Job, I'm bringing those men that are your friend, friends to come and offer an offering at your feet so that I can remove my hand from destroying them. God can never fight for you if you have an unclean conscience. Lord, I'm believing for promotion. I want breakthrough. I want career doors to open. I want that to open. But God sees your conscience because God will never establish somebody that will go in there and forget him if they have already forgotten him now. You know, there is a difference between riches and wealth. Wealth is generational. Riches is temporary. When you have become wealthy, you will never finish what God gave you. I receive. It will take generations to try to even consume 2% of it. Amen. That's what That's I want to leave behind. That's true. Me too. But somebody who is focused on riches, they are short-sighted. Because what God gives you, he gives it to you so that your family will never go through those things again. Because he believes that whatever he creates or brings will create after its own kind. So if you are the first millionaire in your family, you will make more millionaires. Amen. I receive. But if you are going into it with already unclean things, God will not establish you. Won't do it. Too good, too good. First Timothy 1.19. Sure. <laughs> Amen. This one is deep. <laughs> First Timothy 1.19. Amen. Remember, the Lord Jesus himself exercised this. They came and told him, Ma, man, Sir, my daughter is dying. She's at home sick. When he, Jesus was about to go, the man came and said, Don't bother the, tea, the good master. Your daughter is dead. Let's go for a funeral. The man wants to cry. Jesus just touches him and says, Just believe. She's only sleeping. Jesus never called death, death. He called it sleep. Because if something is asleep, you just need to do this, wake up. Amen. And it will wake up. But if you say death, it means it is over. There is no coming back. So even his language testified to what he saw. I'm talking to wrong people. Are you sure you're the one that needs this message? I will see. The Lord Jesus never said death. He told, he waited on purpose for Lazarus to die. For three days he didn't go. He knew that he was sick. Not because they sent news to him. Prophetically he knew. Then the third day, he told his disciples, we have to go to Lazarus because we have to go and wake him up. They said, Lord, if he's asleep, will he not just wake up? Say, guys, we have to go and wake him up. They said, Lord... But if he's asleep, he'll just wake up. Then the Bible says, then he told them plainly, he's dead. 
Not is there to push him to say something that they will relate to. When they told him, he said, I will give you a sign. You will destroy this temple and on the third day I will raise it up again. He did not say, you will kill me. He said, you will betray, the, the, the son of man will be betrayed, you will be put upon a cross and on the third day I will come back. He never spoke about him dying. Death. Even when it was prophesied about him by David, he said, for you will not leave my bones, my body, in hell. You won't leave it there. So the Lord Jesus came with the conscience that me, I cannot die. I am laying down my life. You, you just see problems in your business, uh, it's over. It's, it's over. I don't think I will ever do it again. Is done. Somebody say something. Wow, man. I guess it's finished. You are quick to go to the negative because all you see is through the eyes of the world. What does being realistic ever benefit anybody? I'm just being honest. Being realistic has never helped anybody. People are building spaceships and cars because they were not realistic. Realistic people said, let's just continue with the horse. It's the fastest means of transportation. He said, what if I can make something that you can put a hundred horsepower you take a hundred horses and you put them in one machine. Well, you can't do that because horses need to eat. They need to. <laughs> Realistic people. <laughs> if you want to be realistic, you cannot be a friend of God. Because nothing about him is realistic. Amen. He thinks it, he makes it, and he continues. Acts 24, 16. We'll finish with this one. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, let's read this one first. Let's read this one. Let's read this one. Read it. Huh? Holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. Do you know what a shipwreck is? Do you know what a shipwreck is? Yes. Some people don't know. Can you tell them, Bishop? As when a ship is wrecked. <laughs> And all the contents that were within the ship are now wasted. You are spirit. Clap for him. <laughs> now you have to understand why it's saying. <laughs> now, <laughs> holding faith and a good conscience, which some have put away concerning faith, and have made shipwreck. Now you have to understand, in life, mm -hmm. life is like we are on a boat. We are sailing. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why you need friendships, relationship, mm -hmm. because you are sailing. Mm -hmm. If you abandon faith and a clear conscience, yeah, yeah, yeah. you will wreck the ship. How many people have ruined friendships, relationships? Because your conscience was not clear. You take people that God has given you lightly. You shipwreck. The worst thing that you can ever assume in life is thinking that things are permanent. You have to maintain True. them to be permanent. True. What you don't maintain, you lose. 
You bought the car, but you still need to take it to service. If you don't service it, the car will die on you. Even though you own it, it will not be useful. So you need a friendship and a relationship with a mechanic to keep that car. It was just not enough you bought it. You have a house. You have to maintain it. If you cannot maintain little things that God has given you, already, you have already shown God, you will never have more than that. If you don't know how to manage just what God has given you, small, maybe it's just even just your body, or your clothes, your shoes, your house, how will God give you a mention? Mm. Amen. Shipwreck is awaiting. It's a definite. You cannot pray against it. You maintain it. This is the last verse we are going to read and we shall pray. Acts 24, 16. Acts 24, 16. Acts 24, 16. Amen. Shy. Amen, amen. Shy. Are you there? Amen. Are you sure you're there? Amen. amen. Let's read it together. And herein do I exercise myself to always have a good conscience void of offense toward God and toward men. People who don't mind offending people, you have already offended God. Because you need a conscience that is void of offense towards God and towards man. Why is it important? Because God will always bless you through a man. Yeah. Amen. True. Shall men give unto your bosom? Not God. God will send men. Amen. True. Favor is a man. Amen. Deliverance is a man. Amen. Breakthrough is a man. Amen. Open doors is a man. Amen. All these things are connected to a human being. But if your conscience is always not caring who you're talking to, how you're talking to them, how you're dealing Shai. with them, how you're approaching them. Shai, help us. Even if God favors you, but a man does not favor you, God will be like, Shai. He's not going to do anything. That's real. You messed up what God was giving to favor you. I'm being honest with you. Some of you are saying, I'm believing God for a breakthrough, but every time God brings somebody, you mess up the relationship. God can't bless you. How will he bless you? Because if he wants to bless you, he'll use the, an, the hand of another human being. Let people talk of you and somebody shut them up and say, ah, that one is a good person. Amen. I've only seen them do good to me. You know, even that day they made a mistake, they told me, you know what, I really made a mistake. I'm sorry, I didn't intend it like that. No, that person is quick to say sorry. They're quick to do this, that, that. Your testimony matters because of where God is taking you. Because God will never have somebody to represent him. That is not good. You know, because of being conscious of this, you know, when the prophet is manifesting, I can see a woman older than me. And I will say, woman, because the prophet is not a physical being. Mm. To him, the lady is a woman. Remember the Lord Jesus is on the cross. His mother is crying. He says, woman, that is your son. Son, that's your mother. He said, woman, that is your son. Son, that is your mother. But to him, Mary was a woman. But to Jesus, that was mom. But to Christ, woman. So when I'm prophesying to people, sometimes I have to control prophets' language 
and say mama. Because the truth is the prophet is old. <laughs> I'm being honest with you. Because a born prophet is different from a raised prophet. They are ancient spirits. More ancient than others. So what am I trying to tell you? You have to always make sure you are treading very carefully as a child of God. Let God, remember Job's testimony, he was a man that feared God. Everybody respected him. Everybody loved him when they saw him. Not saying that nobody will have something to say. But the majority of people will always fight for you. If your group of friends tolerate you doing sinful things and things like that, you're in the wrong company. You're on the, you, you have a visa, first class, to the pit, to hell. I'm being honest with you. You can't have one foot in and one foot out. Change your conscience. Work on it. Change how you look at people. Change how you look at situations. When somebody says you cannot do it, you say God makes a way where there's no way. You actually see how the door will open. Amen. I'm talking to the wrong people. The more I have walked with the Lord, the more I have realized the importance of your ability to see. How paramount it is. How paramount it is. How extremely important it is. Don't make God a, 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 a what is the word I'm looking for? Don't make God a, 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 a plan B or something that you just go for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your, you lift your hands to Jesus. Father, I pray for your people. Candy, your soul. I pray, O oh Lord, that something supernatural will take place today. Yes, Lord. That from this day they will see through your eyes. Thank you. And no longer see through the eyes of flesh. Yes, of course, it is. I pray, O oh Lord, that whatsoever was the mind or the thoughts of the enemy for their life will surely never come to pass. Just as you caused Moses to see the seas part, may they part every situation that has been standing in their way. Mm. Hallelujah. May they open doors that were not possible to open. Yes. May they change situations that were not possible mm. to change. Mm. Yes. May their words bring life where there was death. Yeah, I receive. May death become simply sleep to them. I receive. Isaiah, 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 Isaiah. Quickly. 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 Fast. Fast, quick, 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 Fast, quick, 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 quick. Come to the front. Quickly. Amen. Lift your hands. Just lift your hands. Come quick, 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 quick. Come, come here. Lift your hands. In the name of Jesus. We secure this child. We secure this child. We secure this child. Where's your Where's your child? <laughs> well, he's in LA because we were evacuated. He's always with his dad and my other son. We secure him in the name of Jesus. It's done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Grab what you want to give to God. I want you to lift it up. She's equal.
I want you to make it a point today. And, and I want you to hear me very carefully. All those who are on YouTube, Facebook, I want all of you to hear me clearly and carefully. I want to pray for the people online. Is this it? Can we come to this? Is this, is this one uh, live? Is it? Yes. Father, I touch them, those who are watching from home. Let this grace and this power and anointing that is in this place bring out all those who are in sickness, those who are bound, those who are going through different things. I release you in the mighty name of Jesus. I remove that evil spirit. I remove that situation. May there be transformation in Jesus' mighty name. Grab what you want to give to God. And I want you to, I want us to read something. Go to the book of Job. Quickly. Go to the book of Job as fast as you can. And this is Job, uh, Job 31 verse 1. Amen. Job 31 verse 1. Job 31, verse 1. Amen, amen. Uh, Job 31, verse 1. I want us all to read it together as, as quickly as we can. Are we ready? Amen. One, two, three. I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? Now you have to understand what it's saying. He's saying... I, made, I have made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I think upon my virgin? The word made there is virgin. Now remember he's not talking about his wife because he was not with a virgin. He already had children. What he's talking about is saying, why then should I defile that which God has given me that is pure? Make a covenant with your eyes today that you will only see that which is pure, that which is good, that which is pleasing to God. Because by doing this, what you do is you are able to see solutions where there are no solutions. Reject defiling yourself. Refuse to defile yourself. Hate to defile yourself. Remember, defiling yourself is not sin. Is what brings forth sin. To defile something is to mess its condition. It's making something that was clean unclean. Let me tell you, your physical eyes. You see, when I was doing today and small, small stuff I was doing, I was using my physical eyes, not spiritual. I was making God speak to me because of what I was seeing. If I open my spiritual eyes, I will see everything. But you have to be able to see and God speak to you concerning what you're seeing. The Lord spoke, this is your prayer assignment for this week. Let me give it to you. I wasn't going to give it. God is just telling me to do it now. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You're going to do Ezekiel 37 verse 1 to 10. Ezekiel 37 verse 1 to 10. Maronde kishta avakata lebere diakusa. Are we there? Amen. Now remember, God was asking Isaiah after he made him Ezekiel, after he made him observe the bones in the valley. He made him see them that there were many, and then God asked him, "Can these bones 
live again. Notice God was asking him questions based on his intention. When you see death, God is asking you, can it work? He's not telling you to die. (laughs) He's asking you, will it work? What do you see? Jeremiah was minding his own business. God asked him, Jeremiah, what do you see? He says, I see roots of a tree. He said, you have seen well. God asks him again, what do you see? He said, I see a pot that is fallen facing the north. He says, you have seen well. Based on what he was seeing is what God was speaking. If he did not see well, God will ask him again, what do you see? Because there is something that God is trying to make him what? See. What do you see? You see the impossible, you reap the impossible. Hallelujah. You see the possible, you reap what? Possible. Thank you, Jesus. This is what you're going to do. You're going to read verse 1 to 10. And then you're going to look at every dry bone in your life. And you're going to command it to come together. You're going to command the flesh. And then you're going to command the life to flow through it. But this will be both mental and you pray as you are seeing that business was no longer together it was scattered see it come together and then prophesy see all the pieces together prophesy it then seeing it produce so much fruit prophesy it Make yourself see results. This is actually a prophetic exercise. I am teaching you how to see in the spirit. If you are clever, you will understand what I'm doing. Because this is where it begins. I don't know why. I'm seeing a a woman. Your name starts with like a G. And I don't know if they're here or they're online. I'm trying to say this name, but it's a very difficult name for me to say. But then I saw another man also. Your name is like uh, Patrick or something like that. But these two people that I'm seeing, it's like the same thing God is going to do. God is bringing revival and life in these people's life. Hallelujah. Lift what you want to give to God. Lift it to heaven. Lift it to heaven. Don't forget, this is your prayer assignment for the week. Until we meet again. Our weeks begin on Thursday. (laughs) Somebody shout shout glory. glory. Lift your hands to heaven. I want you to speak something to your seat right now before I pray for you. Speak something. You can speak it by seeing it yourself. And as you're seeing it, you're showing it to God. Aish. <laughs> Mazunde likista avocata la dea 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 dea. Maria cos e prevediista antolegia. Roca paste eza. Zonte liga a prodenia. Macote lia azuva. Zegeredia tonte le tonte le tonte le tonte. Maronde gista atulia asa. Zakura pasente ki caradoa. Zakushta inka inka te dedea. 
Zoka paradia santo tole boshia. Azi katala brande gista anto yabasi. Moza katosh. Makuria talaya. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless the seeds of your people and what you have given them. I pray, O oh Lord. I pray, O oh Lord. I pray, O oh Lord, that whatever they are trusting you for, I pray now, O oh Father. Yes, O oh God. Let that be Jesus. done according to their sight. I release it in the name of Jesus. I pray for a new vision. The ability to see. The ability to see. The ability to show you what they mostly desire. Let it be so now. Let their seed speak for them always when their voice cannot reach you. I establish this in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. 